Over the years, we always, as a head coach here, I try to do special things with our program and bring special people to meet our team. I had a chance to meet Congresswoman Jackie Spear in, a month ago as a woman, as a leader, as a, someone that serves our community and how she carries herself throughout what she has gone through is amazing for our young lady to know how much more they can build into the future. When the coach called, I said absolutely because I really feel an obligation to help women exceed their goals and to recognize that, that really um, they're part of making sure this country stays on a firm footing of equality and justice for all. Coach asked me to come and talk to you today about resiliency and I have a story about resiliency because you are looking at a three-time loser, truly. I lost for student body president in high school, devastated me. I lost when I ran for Congress the first time in 1979. I was 28 years old. And I lost when I ran for Lieutenant Governor of California in 2006. But in each of those losses, I have realized what a great win it was. And one of my mantras is that success is never final and failure is never fatal. And for me, Losing for Congress set me up to run for the Board of Supervisors and I became the youngest person ever elected to the Board of Supervisors in San Mateo County when I was almost 30 and then went on to ser serve in the state legislature uh, both in the Assembly and the Senate and then eventually in Congress and I have a record there. 29 years from the first time I ran to the second time that I ran and got elected. But life is all about being resilient and for me uh, it's been proven over and over again. When I was 28 years old, just a few years older than many of you, I was working for Congressman Leo Ryan, and this is all in your history books now, you weren't alive back then, but in 1978, Congressman Ryan went down to Jonestown, Guyana in South America because a church here in San Francisco called the People's Temple had taken about 900 of their members to South America and created a commune down there. A number of young people had defected and came and told stories about mind control and uh, physical abuse, and yet nothing was being done about it. So Congressman Ryan made the trip down there to find out, and I was his legislative counsel at the time and was on that trip. In the end, Congressman Ryan was assassinated on the airstrip as we were leaving with people who wanted to defect. And I was shot five times. And I'm lying on that airstrip, 28 years old, realizing, my God, my life's over. I said the act of contrition and waited for the lights to go out. And when they didn't go out, I thought, I don't want my grandmother, who was then 85 years old, to have to live through my funeral. So I dragged my body. Um, to the plane that was still revving its engines. I made a commitment then that if I survived, I would never take another day for granted. I would live every day as fully as possible and that I would dedicate my life to public service. So that's what I've done. Uh, down the road, some 14 years later, I, was, I got married. Uh, I, had, uh, I got pregnant. We had our first child. And I became the first legislator in the, in the state of California to have a baby while in office. And life was truly wonderful. I then was running for Secretary of State, statewide office. I'm driving to Sacramento, I get a phone call, and my staff member says, your husband's been in an automobile accident. I turn around, I drive back, get to the hospital, and they tell me that my husband is brain dead. And then I had to pull the plug. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. So what do you do when all of a sudden you're a widow, you're a single mother, you're pregnant with a second child, and you've lost the love of your life? You rely on three things, at least that's what I did. Family, friends, and faith. And that's what got me through. So. I tell you all that because it's all about resilience. I was a single mom for eight years and that's why it's so very important for each of you, your young, bright, young women, always be able to take care of yourself. Don't ever expect that there's going to be someone else there. There may be, but then again, there may not. Life has a way of 
presenting us with many challenges but many opportunities. And today you're going to have a great opportunity to go out there and show what you've got. And it's really a privilege to be with you. Thank you. All of you will have many opportunities as you move forward through your career here at the university and then you know your professional life that open, opens up after that. And, and here's a wonderful example of a woman who, what are we, 75 years after women got the right to vote, uh, we are fortunate now to be a country led by many women uh, who are strong and wise and who take to heart uh, not only the uh, challenges that, that, that they've faced personally, but the challenges that women and men and children face uh, all the time in this country. I want to thank you uh, specifically for your service and then for coming here today and sharing your resilience with us. It's been a very, very enriching life. But it's had its ups and downs, and I love to tell young people in particular, it's important to pick yourselves up, dust yourselves off, and go right back at it.